Hey guys, Rory is here. Welcome back to Tacoma. To Tacoma. <laughs> so, I was gonna say let's jump straight into the biomedical lab, but I just suddenly remembered that the observation room opened up last time, and we did not check it. Ooh. So, if you remember last time, we were looking in the personnel area, and uh, we found out some of the sort of, if I want to call it office politics. So, you really miss it, huh? Well, it just seems like it'd be strange being back on Earth already. After only a year up here. Really? After all I've had to hear from you about the conditions VT has us working under? Yeah, but there's that. And then there's this. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll miss it. <laughs> I can't blame you. <laughs> so, whether you're getting renewed or not, did you submit your yearly crew member report? No. <laughs> yeah, me neither. <laughs> yeah, I think I might go get that done. Okay, yeah. I probably should too. Oh my god, wait. Is today obsolescence? Oops, it is. Yeah. Didn't Odin give you a job to do? No. No. A computer playing favorite. <laughs> yeah, that is weird. In the previous episode, we heard some things about how Odin, the AI, was it was talking to Sarah or Sarah Sarah <laughs> you made it world famous Tacoma Dome yeah it was talking to Sarah as if it did have like a favorite or it was talking to her as though it really cared for her and it's like wait a minute but it's an AI what the hell <laughs> whatever the case uh, let's leave that area I don't think there's anything other than story to uh, find there Grab what? Medicine? Emetrine. Chewables. Relieves nausea due to microgravity. Right, yep. <laughs> well, freaking sweet. Uh, I scored a sweet point in this area last time. <laughs> Did you point? Uh, now we're going into the biomedical area. <laughs> so yeah, I think this is mostly just... You're exploring... Ooh. Uh, Venturist Belt, Observation, sorry, Orbital Vacation Bungalows, Just Married. Yeah, it's a vacation, vacation, like, space station. Shit, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> no! Oh, right, most of this game, I think, is driven with the idea of, uh, the reason that you explore is to find out story stuff. It doesn't have a whole lot of puzzles, although it does have puzzles. Yeah, when you're down here, you've got gravity, because you're on, on one of the outer rings. So, uh... They're, they're rotating, so there's gravity, the simulated gravity. Um, but when you're in the middle, you've got zero grav. Uh, cool, AI access here. And I think the way this works is that you put your device in, in each of these areas, and it slowly transfers the AI, Odin, over to your system. But while it takes freaking ages to do that, and so it, you go explore and find story stuff, a random open fact for you while you work. Odin was the very first AI to be branched from the original source over a hundred years ago. He's an old guy. Right. This is H, by the way. Ah, uh, hi. Oh. Uh, I hope you can read this. Okay, your re real handler is back from the bathroom. Now bye. Oh. Right. So, Odin is like a... an offshoot of a really, really old AI. Okay. Yeah, so it looks like we're standing still and the rest of the ship is moving around us, but... Oh, no, no there we go. Now you can see the stars. Oh, yeah, the persp my, my perspective shifted and suddenly I, re I could see that we are rotating, in fact. Uh, but yeah, okay. There's the botany or the medical area. We'll go to the medical first, seeing as we're just hearing stories about Sarah. Let's recover some AR data. I wonder if you can go into this game and not do any of the AR stuff. Okay, Sarah. We'll see you over in Mech. As soon as everything's wrapped up here. Sarah. They call her Sarah. All right. Good speed. Okay. Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. Pause. Pause. <laughs> Restore her peace. Uh, what have we got here? So, Nat was talking with Odin about access to sort of raw data or raw information. Like, because she's had this thing about wanting to get access to Odin. Wanting to get access to the, uh, to the AI, you know, the deeper access, but they've, like, restricted her. Okay, so Nat actually really 
like to um Evie's face, Nat is like thinks that Evie's a really good you know she's really good at what she does. Okay, can't restore that. Can't restore that either. Okay. So yeah, she has a deep respect for Evie. I don't know if that's just superficial. Ooh. Okay, that's that's out of the uh, space that we're in. Yeah, these are the like fields over the door when it when it means that you're gonna exit. Actually, that field looks different. It's a field like that over the exit if it means you're gonna leave the AR space. Okay, there's some lock I need to get access to. Uh, so we found found where to use the key. We haven't found the key yet. We'll find it. There are some minor sort of miniature puzzles, some minor puzzles uh, in some of the areas. Like usually it's finding a key or finding some piece of in, like data that has like a passcode or something in it. Okay, so this is uh, what's his face again? I forget what his name is. Um, He's the bio guy. We'll be, we'll see, be seeing more of him in just a minute. Oh, this is them trying to trying to stay alive after the impact, is it? Two days ago. Yeah, because I've now emergency in, in effect was above um, Nat as well, and so now it's this. It says like approximately fifty hours of oxygen. I didn't know what this meant before. It said two cryopods occupied. So Evie and Clive have gone into cryo. Okay, so that reduces the amount of breathing people to four. Okay, okay, interesting. And so now everyone's desktop should say, like, oxygen supplies. Um, you're cleared for cryo, yeah. Okay, so yeah, this is just Sarah, Sarah. <laughs> They've called her Sarah a couple of times now, so. Uh, that was just Sarah giving Clive and Evie a rundown on cryostasis. Okay. Good to know. Uh, let's just have a look around really quick. This is a little eye test. Um, I don't know where I'd have to sit, but I can read all the letters. <laughs> Trust me when I say that. I'm not going to read them out loud. Oh, that's always so weird, looking up and realizing that we're sort of... I don't know, it feels, it feels weird. It feels weird. So we got imaging. So this is like a... Oh. Oh, take out... Oh, there might be a little di uh, dish somewhere with, like, yeah, valuables. Mousy? Aw. There was one of those in Evie's room before. What's that down there? Can I interact with it? Tube. Oh, lip balm. Okay. Oh, that's the house cat that's down there. And that's why the mousy was there. That's adorable. <laughs> But yeah, I'm assuming there's like some sort of dish somewhere that has items in it that might be useful for me. So yeah, this is a bio scan. This is a scan that um, uh, Sarah would have put the others through, the uh, Evie and Clive through, uh, in order to you know um, in order to test them for. Oh, what the hell? Oh, it's a it's a test skeleton. <laughs> I was like, there's a corpse in here? No, no, there's not. Well, let's just go into the medical office. Now there might be some. I might be able to get the code for the door on the other side from there. What's this? Oh. Oh, cool. Wait, before I use the computer, this is her her um degree. Probably a doctorate. Yeah, doctor of medicine. Let's see what other calming sounds there are. Ooh, summer showers. Oh, there's the key. There's the key that I need. Supply locker. I saw a key uh, requiring door before. Ooh. Ah, oh, I thought there was actual coffee in there. I was like, ooh, some coffee. <laughs> or tea. I don't know. She might like tea. Let's see, this is her. This is all about her. Sarah. Contractor Hasmati. Thank you for your upgrading. Thank you for updating your crew AR bioscan records access code. Please enter a code reminder phrase for your future reference. Graduation. Ah, okay. Cool. I can, I can, I'll do that. I'll get that now just so I know. Uh, 2080. 2080. Uh, they were like threatening her. Well, not threatening her, but they were saying like, if you take responsibility, you'll get much better positions elsewhere. 
And she's like, no, I'll, I'll just take a renewal, thank you. Wow. Just wow. Alrighty, well, we have this key now. Let's go use it in that door we saw before. Excuse me. Is it in here? Yeah, medical storage. Insert key. Why, thank you. Open up. Uh, what do we have in here? Oh. <laughs> I'm assuming this is just for the guy over here. Oh. No, the closet is in a different room. Okay. Let's just put this on the... F Actually, yeah, let's just go find the... Oopsies. Didn't mean to throw you, buddy. Let's just go put this in the room. I don't know why I feel the need to do that. It's probably going to be a, um... An achievement. Put back. No. <laughs> okay, whatever. Maybe there's more to it. Grab papers. Uh... Ah. Right, so... This is talking about the incident the email was talking about as well. So, Sarah was involved in like a... Like someone died on that on that ship. And uh, it was... She was she was the surgeon at the time. But she's... She says, you know, that it was actually her... It was actually the AI. Anti-anxiety support. It was the AI that was on the ship malfunctioned or, you know, didn't function the way it's supposed to. And that led to the person's death. And so that actually was hugely damaging to the company because the, it meant that their AI system that they'd built was not very good. Um, alrighty. Oh wait, if I put the hat on the skeleton, can I? Oh my god, I can. Yay, Skeletina. <laughs> I just got an achievement. Skeletina. <laughs> I'm not actually solving anything. <laughs> but I think I might have already solved the thing that's for this area. Uh, let's just, uh... What? I don't know. I... No, I'm just thinking about... Okay. Andy and Clive are already in deep freeze. Did you read the message they sent? Yeah. Why are we going into the supply closet? I got to talk to them a little bit right before Sarah took them down to cryo, and Evie was being so encouraging. They're putting all their faith in us, but... But what? Right before they turned to go, just for a second, they looked so worried. Oh, baby. The clock is ticking, and I just keep thinking, what if the last time they saw each other is the last time they'll ever see each other? Don't think about that. How can I? How can you not think about it? So, you know the concept of partitioning from early century computing? Yeah, I think so. So, you have a data drive. Maybe one partition was your operating system and the other one was like general data storage. And maybe you'd partition part of the drive off to contain something that might be unstable that you otherwise kind of, you know, wanted not to interfere with anything else. There are certain things that are going to help us get this done, but some things, they need to be partitioned off. Because thinking about them isn't going to help us. But you're thinking about us, at least, aren't you? Yeah. And... When I do let myself start thinking about how there's a possibility this is the last of our time together, too. Nah. Then I start thinking we should really right. make the most of it. <laughs> right, so <laughs> she has her priorities straight. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, uh, so the bio guy actually came in here. But I'm gonna follow Sarah okay, this time. Sarah. We'll see you over in Mac. As soon as everything's wrapped up here. Alright. Okay. Sarah, you started talking with Odin. Oh, Odin. Did I do the right thing? In what regard? Does Nat deserve to know? What her odds are if she ends up going into cryo. I believe uh -oh. that you have made a decision with both Roberta and Natalie's best interests at heart. Above all. Do no harm. 
if we do make it out of this thing, Nat's going to have to find out I didn't tell her everything at some point. I believe that is a bridge to be crossed at a later date. Andrew is here for his exam. Oh. Uh. Send him in. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Rewind. I, let's, I think he'll come in in just a minute and I can interact with his thing. Thank you. <laughs> Before you start talking, uh, let's have a look. What has he got to say? Andrew. So Andrew is his name. I forgot his name before. It had A in one of his emails. Andrew. Ugh. So he was halfway through writing like his last letter to his family. Uh, and then he said, know that I love you more than, and then, I'm sorry Odin, I can't do this right now. I'll finish this later. Stop dictation. Hmm. So he really thought they were dying. Oh. Roberta was messaging Andrew about something she's working on. So their last ditch effort was to try and make... This, she was talking about a drone. There must be something that they can pilot outside the, the station. And it's designed probably just for close interaction with the, sh with the, um, the ship. So it's not got a lot of vitals on it, if you know what I mean. Not got, not got a lot of life support stuff. Uh, but she's basically trying to create a raft so that they can go to the moon, they can fly it to the moon. Because you can see the moon from outside the ship, from the windows of the ship. Fly them to the moon, which I'm assuming there's a there's a base there. They, they, I've seen a few, like, pictures of resorts on the moon. And so she's, like, basically look, saying, look, I need to work on this. Thank you, Andrew, for the, the algae, which apparently is, is resupplying oxygen. Uh, something he's done really quick to try and save the people on the ship. Uh, get some algae producing oxygen so that they can breathe a little longer. But the, everyone's stressing this shit out. I'm not surprised, honestly. Ripping for cryo. Right, so Clive and Evie opted to go into cryo because they're not useful for something as physical as this. Andrew stayed, op stayed out to make the algae thing work, and then he's going to be going on to cryo as well. So soon it's just going to be Natalie, Roberta, and... Uh, Sarah. Right, so this is the... Andrew requested information about what happens to a contractor if they die on the ship. You know, on the job. So Odin, is Sarah ready for me? I will tell her that you are here. <sighs> so you showed up for your exam. I did. So, does that mean you've decided to... What's gonna happen to us, Sarah? What? Um... Well, Bert and Nat are going to fix up the drone with life support, and, and mm, then we're... No. I mean... What if things don't work out? And we're still stuck in cryo? Oh. Well, when you go into stabilizing sleep, it feels just like any other sleep, really. The body effectively goes into a controlled hypothermic coma. Do you dream? Sometimes. Sometimes very intense dreams. And then what? After a certain amount of time, your body slows down too much, things start shutting down, don't wake back up. It, uh... It doesn't hurt. No. Right. Do you think Bert and Nat can get it done? I do. Then I'll just have to trust your professional opinion, and do my part. It's been good working with you, Doc. I'm ready for my exam. Uh, they heard uh, Nat and Roberta being intimate. <laughs> Alright, I think that's all the information that's here. Uh, let's go to the personal quarters through here. Yeah, this is Sarah's personal quarters. Alright, let's recover this data now. <laughs> Once again, don't know if this is, uh... Copyrighted music. I think it's just... It's just music and there's no other info. Yeah. So, what have we got here? JJ Pratt's Image Life CM. 
So wait. Ah. Oh. oh, I see. Yeah, so this is JJ Pratt. This is the guy who died on one of the other ships and Sarah was the medic, or who's the who, she was the doctor who was working on him. He was like a blogger. <laughs> it's, it's basically a a YouTuber. And he was going up, he was a food YouTuber, basically, and he was going up to the station to do a vlog up there. Right, so this is, uh, Sarah's asking for information she shouldn't be getting. Right, so yeah, she was asking if Nat could get her access to that information, whatever that information is. Yeah, so maybe Nat thought there was an error with the AI, but maybe there isn't. It wasn't, and it actually was her fault that he died. She blamed the AI, but she doesn't actually have any evidence, by the looks of it, of that fact. Yeah, so this is, um, once again, J.J. Pratt. So yeah, this is his, like, last, one of, one of his last entries before he died. <laughs> okay, well, uh, that's everything, isn't it? Yeah. So, is there anything in here that I can find that, uh, can give me a little more information? <laughs> so these are... Yoga poses? Sure. So she was interested in yoga. What's this? New translation by Yedra Zhu? Zhu? The Book of Changes. I Ching. Deep waters in the heavens, thunder clouds approaching from the west. But no, no rain yet. Changing line one, Hex 48, the well. What does that mean? There might be a hint to something. So Andrew is helping her with her plants. Makes sense, I guess. Get the biologist <laughs> to help you. All I'm seeing is that there's what appears to be a lot of guilt about what happened showing up here. It's interesting though that the um <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> yeah, I, I I just I can't get can't get past the feeling that um there's like she feels guilty about uh that guy's death okay, i'll just put this back in there what's this card with love dear sarah we are thinking of you during this ramadan and i hope you are celebrating in your own way up there as well may these help you break your fast we look forward to your next visit Please give yourself permission to relax every once in a while during your posting. We love you, mom and dad. It'd be pretty hard to observe those kinds of things while in space with only six other people, or with only five other people. Six people total. All right, I think that's everything. I don't think there's anything hidden in this particular room. Once again, I can actually just come back to these rooms at any time <laughs> if I wish to. So I'm not gonna worry too much about that. Yeah, because I think this is just a little area just to find out a little bit more backstory. I think that's what all the rooms are, honestly. Because I can- I don't need to do any of this. I can just wait for the transfer to happen and then leave. Let's see, yeah, we got everything here. Let's head back out. This should be hopefully about 50% done. Yeah, 57. 50.7%. Let's head into botany. So... What have we- is this just like an airlock? Looks a bit like it, but... Whatever. Um, huh. So we're not reached an AR space yet. Botanist office, food supply. Protein growth. These are mushrooms here. Yeah, so this is like a, this is your gardening. So these are beef, fish and chicken, I'm assuming. Being made from, they're, they're growing the, the meat in some sort of like synthesis lab I'm guessing so because I'm, I'm guessing that in this in this reality at this time they had developed synthesized meat and so that's what they're having here botanist office welcome okay I think we've probably found the computer before we're ready there might be something locked in here that's Andrew Andrew is the the biologist on the station Oh! 
He just bought an orbital bungalow. Oh my god. Oh, it's an investment. It's an invest- yeah, investment plan. Ah, oh, I see. So he now officially, like, owns one of the rooms on the- on the orbital, like, station thing. And whenever anyone rents that room for a vacation, uh, he'll get some money for it. Huh. Wise investment. Oh, right, these are his orchids. Yeah, we just saw one of those in the previous room. Yeah, so here's some beautiful orchids that... Okay, there's nothing really that interesting on there. <laughs> but yeah, he'd, uh... He'd made some orchids. Oh, is there another stone that I maybe I can bring back to that? I'm gonna keep my eye out for a little ball that I can maybe return to this little s s thing here. Uh, but yeah, so he, he'd been... Oh, 0281. I don't know what that's for. 0281. I'm just gonna screen. <laughs> Screenshot it. I was gonna like, I was like, oh, I was gonna write this down, but nah. Sorry, I'm not reading any of these out because I think it takes too long for me to read it. So I'm just keeping it on the screen as much as I can and then gonna cut it up so you guys can read it if you wish. There's also a 2052 here. Hmm. Well, we have that one. 0281. I don't think I'll need to use the screenshot. I think I can remember that. Uh, irrigation? Right, we'll go down to irrigation in a minute. Let's check some of the other rooms. Oh! Yes, please. So there is an AR place here. An AR scene. Alright, what do you say, folks? Yay or nay? Obviously, we're on board. I'm in. Me too. Uh, okay. Alright. Well, we non-essential personnel need to yeah. figure out how to do everything we can to set this mission up for success. Then get the hell out of your way as quickly as possible. Yeah. Time is oxygen, people. Break. I I'll um. Went along with this. I'll head downstairs and get. Okay. Before we continue, let's read this. See subject. I'm in botany already. Get here. Ah, oh, yeah. That's yeah. She she called a meeting for everyone. Right. Seventy two hours is the absolute maximum. <sighs> Right, so this is her this is her plan, and it might not have succeeded. Right, so she's trying to get information from Nat about how long it, she thinks Nat will, you know, she thinks it will take to do that. So yeah, Roberta actually came up with the idea, and then Evie is trying to make it happen, basically. Hmm. Okay. Started on. Oh my God. Okay. So now we actually. Okay, wait. Uh, everyone's talking all at once. <laughs> Let's go back to here. Time is oxygen, people. I'll listen to these two Great. first. I can't believe everybody went along with this. I'll head downstairs and get started on. Oh my god. Okay. So now we actually have to build hey, this thing. Andrew. Clive. Andrew. Wanna talk? Sure, Evie. Are, are you okay? Evie. Hey, Evie. Hey, um, I know you're all like gung ho to. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let's listen to that. And break. I can't I'll, believe everybody um, went along with this. No, I didn't expect them to either. Oh my god. So now we actually have to build this thing. Yeah, that was the whole point. Hold on, I need to ask Evie something. Okay, okay. Expect them to Oxygen, people. Break. I I'll, um... Along with this. I'll head downstairs and get started on... something. Okay. Hey, Andrew. Andrew. Yeah. Sure. Hey, are, are you okay? Evie! Hey, okay. I'm not. Hey, okay, um, they're gonna go in here and talk. Like gung ho to help us out and everything, but I'll follow them later. I did the math. Uh, if we could get this done in like 48 hours, not 72, could the rest of us wait longer to go in? Exactly. Listen, ladies, I get it. You're trying to do right by us, but every minute we wait to go in is a minute you don't have to get this thing flying. And knowing what we know about VT. We've got to give you every chance we can to succeed. So right. there's no way we can convince you? We made a plan. Now we just need to hold up our end of the bargain. Then I guess we should stop wasting time and get to work. This is gonna be good, Evie. You just wait. <laughs> right of your life. More That's ways than more one. Ways than one. Mm. They, two of them said in more ways I than one. I didn't think things would end like this. Did you? What do you mean, end? 
Come on, Clive. Yeah. What? You really think they can turn that thing into a passenger vehicle in two days? We might as well hold our breath and just try dog paddling over there. <laughs> but Listen, it's it's okay. We know it's not safe working up here. We just don't think about it a lot, but here we are. And we knew it all along. But VT could VT's not fucking coming, Clive! VT's not fucking coming. You think sending a crew up here at the drop of a hat just to check on things is worth it to them? Dollars and cents, Clive. You know what one of those fuckers said to me one time? If it doesn't make dollars, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> them sending a crew up in time, it just doesn't make sense. So you're just giving up then? No. We're doing what we said we'd do. Bert and Nat, they are our only shot and we have got to take it. But I can also be realistic that- Evie. I don't want to be realistic with you. Hmm. At least they finally, you know, admitted something to each other, you know. Well, time to go make final preparations then. <laughs> but not too finally. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm, I'm picturing it. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Relaxation sounds. Ah. Oh. <laughs> For some reason, I just thought that was normal. The day we'll be walking together. Like this. The gravity, it won't be artificial. I mean, isn't it strange? We've... We've never felt the Earth's pull together. One day. One day. <sighs> Well, good. Good for them. Oh, I'm gonna Evie. keep stalking them. Do you think you could get everyone to medical? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Now that we've followed them, we'll go to someone else's line. Hey, um, I know. Okay. I was not seven. Let's follow Nat in, and Roberta. You just wait. <laughs> Ride of your life. More ways than one. Is it both Clive and Roberta okay. said in more Where ways than one? Where do we start? One. Start? I got things started as soon as this all went down. I'll show you what oh. I've got lined up. To the workshops! Ah. Okay, well... <laughs> so that's probably when they started... When they, uh... Went off, I think? That might have led on to the previ to the next area, or the previous area where we just watched before. I didn't expect him to either. Hey, are, are you okay? Evie. Hey. Nope, I'm not. Okay. Oh. Damn it. <laughs> I, need a, I need a passcode. Okay. So... Wait a minute. There was a passcode in the previous... Wasn't there a passcode in one of the previous areas? I think I forgot about it, didn't I? Shit. I'm gonna go back and do that really quick. Yeah, here there is. Oh, oh, cause we got, no, we got the passcode, didn't we? It was 2080. Yeah. Some body scan records. Okay. These two sections that I'm currently going between are, uh, they're, they're interlinked. This is actually the later time. We did the later one first, and then we're going to do the first, the earlier one second. She has no risk factors, okay. Okay, so she's fine. Roberta's fine. What about Nat? Nat apparently has a problem. A heart problem. Ah, wait, how old are these people? She is 27. Okay, so she's around two years older than I am, than I would be if I was in this situation. Whereas actually Nat is two years younger. Approximately. <laughs> hmm, interesting. So they're a freaking computer programmer that's younger than I am on a freaking space station trying to save lives. Holy shit. But yeah, she has a heart murmur. Pro probable mitral stenosis. Patient exhibits clear signs of cardiovascular abnormality. Heart murmur. This condition represents severe risk of death during the cryogenic revival process. Expected probability of survival for the patient under this treatment is 18%. Patient is not recommended for cryogenic stasis. Physician should consider alternative methods of treatment for this patient. Okay, now we'll check him. We'll check Andrew. 
Uh, risk factors none. Okay, so he's fine. We kind of heard and found out about that already, but I just suddenly remembered that there was something we hadn't seen. I remember there being a passcode that I had not checked. So, let's get back to this other side again. But yeah, we found a, a room that we need to open up. Wait, what was that? 0281, wasn't it? Yeah. Let's try that. 0281. Yay! <laughs> That's freaking sweet. Ooh. Um, okay, let's just rewind it. No, no, rewind it a little bit. Nope, I'm not. What do you want to talk about? I can't do it. Uh, I can't. I can't. I... This is all crazy. I know. I, okay, I know what I said. But I... What was I supposed to say? You all... You all pressured me. Andrew. <laughs> they really Cigarette expect packet. us to climb into some jury rig thing and ride it through space just because VT might not come pick us up. It, it's insane. And first, we all have to get in cryo just for the privilege... Well, some of us do. Andrew, I... I don't know what to say. Bert and Nat need us. Oh, he's they dragging the, the cable? You. Well, I'm not doing it. I'm not getting in cryo. I'm not... I'm gonna be the same one here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, wait, 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 just, just pause it for a second. <laughs> So wait, friggin' Andrew smokes? Yeah, they're, they're, they're cigarettes from this brand. <laughs> Let's just put these in the... in the bin. Damn it, Andrew. But here's the stone that I was definitely sure was around here somewhere. Uh... We can bring this back up to that little area. With the stones. No, nobody even considered that VT might come pick us up in time if we just wait. Nobody even considered it. Listen, just don't talk to anybody else about this for now, okay? And and if I were to call the crew into medical, you'd show up, right? I guess it depends what it is. Okay. Just give me a little time. Odin, I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out. Close your eyes. I did already. A light wind rustles the green tall grass. Your skirt billows gently. Warm sun caresses your back. Okay, one second. I'm gonna pause it and I'm gonna go in here and put the rock in. <laughs> I'm like so preoccupied. Like, I have this rock. I must place it in there. Wait, that's a different stand. But it's definitely where I'm supposed to put it. I think there might be something I can do. Either I can polish the rock somehow, because these ones are like perfectly polished. Or um, there's some order I need to place them in or something. It's definitely an achievement. <laughs> I must find the achievement. Okay, let's go back to this. Yes. You begin walking forward. The grass is cool. Yeah. Okay, let's read this. Oh. I see. Feet parted with each step. Do you see what is in front of you? As I step through the grass, I naturally come upon a path. Yes. The dirt of the so The dirt of the path is soft on the soles of my feet. I don't know what's going to happen to us, Odin. Sarah. <laughs> I am striding forward confidently upon my appointed path. Wherever it takes me is where I am meant to be. I am striding confidently on my appointed path. Sarah? Yes, Odin? Are you going to be all right? I think so. Okay. Oh, Evie, uh, do you think you could get everyone to medical? I, I want to make sure they've got the best shot at waking back up once they do go in. Uh, all right. How about this? 
Let's give folks a little time to regroup. But why don't Clive and I follow you over there right now and get ours done? No time like the present. Lead the way. I'm I'm guessing I'm going to guess okay. that. Okay, Evie, I. Hello. Oh wait, wait. Okay, yeah. Before we do that, let's reverse to when. Uh. Sarah left. Okay. You see if Andrew right? didn't say anything. I guess it depends what it is. Okay. Yeah, everyone left and then Andrew popped out. Just give me a little time. Okay. What's your deal, Andrew? What are you going to do? Hey, Odin. Yes, Andrew. What should I do? What do you mean? I don't know. I, I just want to go home. I understand. Do you? I believe that I do. Can you tell me the average time it's taken VT to send an evac crew to investigate situations like this? The average time between a remote facility losing ground contact and an investigative crew arriving on site is 98.4 hours. God damn it. Please try not to be worried, Andrew. <laughs> That's easy for you to say. You don't have lungs. So, what do you think we should do? Standard operating procedure requires all crew to engage cryogenic hibernation until help arrives. Yeah, you know, people die in cryo, right? I know. Sometimes. If, uh... <laughs> if we don't make it out of this... Can you deliver a message? Oh, this family? might be the message that I saw in the next one. I will do everything in my power. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll send you something later, all right? Of course. Okay, let's recover this. So yeah, we saw a letter in the next area that was him basically starting his last letter to his family. Ah, oh, Andrew had an argument with Mark before this. I don't know when this actually happened, when this went through. But, um, he was unable to send a sorry back. It says, yeah, connection lost. It was probably after they lost the ability to communicate. Yeah, so this is him, like, talking about and figuring out to, um, set up the extra oxygen from the, from the, fun uh, from the algae. <laughs> Andrew keeps badgering Nat about communications, I see. Well, looks like this will work. Give us a few extra hours anyway. Yeah. Thanks, Odin. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, he set, he set things up so there was extra oxygen being created, I guess, and, and fed back into the ship. So yeah, it's like, they, it went down. The oxygen supplies are so low, but it's actually starting to go back up again. A little bit. Algae population. Right, it's starting to increase again. Uh, oxygen production, yeah, increasing. The algae thing might have solved the short-term, a short-term problem. Uh, give them a little bit extra time to think about what they can do. Okay, Evie, I... Hello? <sighs> Guess I'll catch up with y'all later then. Yeah, okay. Uh, was there anyone I haven't followed? I don't think so. I think I've seen everything and I've interacted with everyone. Because everyone's left the room now. Okay, let's go to Andrew's personal quarters. See if there's something I can... Uh... Get this, yep. This will just be a one where it's probably just static. Oh no, there's another person in here. Oh. Okay, Odin. Ready? I'm gonna do it this time. Okay, before we do that, let's read this. <laughs> Caution, incoming fire. Ah, oh, it's a game. Spitfire's Revenge. <laughs> Sarah has, has like, beaten him massively. He has one life. He has two lives left. Sarah has, like, a nearly 2,000 points, and he has only 250. <laughs> oh, dear. Human Oversight Accord. That's what we need. That's what we need in real life. 
because there is the fear that everything's going to be replaced with machines doing tasks and jobs having like a having a, an agreement that all businesses have to have some kind of human overview or overseeing of things it's probably a good idea so the Venturis is really having problems <laughs> yikes oh it's his son as a, did, he, did he give him sunglasses or something as a gift? Yeah, this is their family. Christmas card. Alright, well... <laughs> I don't know if there's anything valuable in the game that he's playing. Um, let's have a look. The Gardens of Versailles. I've been there. <laughs> I've been to Versailles. It, it is amazing. It is amazing there. I think I was pretty o overwhelmed, though prior to going there because I had already been to the Louvre. Oh. See, freaking smokes. What is this? Is there a bin? Oh yeah, there is a bin right here, isn't there? Okay, wait, no, no. I need to put that in the bin. It doesn't fit in the bin. <laughs> Go in the bin. It like it wants to position it in such a way that it, it doesn't go in the bin properly. Okay, wait, I'm gonna put that over there, put this in the bin. I don't know, for some reason I have this feeling this weird feeling like there's an achievement for throwing all the cigarettes in the bin. <laughs> if there isn't, there should be. Okay. Let's put this book back. Aurea MD. Moisturizing lotion. Having lotion in a right next to your beard is dodgy. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if there's anything you that useful in here. Right, so Amazon University, wherever that is, um, was going to allow Nicholas, uh, Andrew's son, to attend the university. Basically, you know, a scholarship. Have a scholarship paid uh, tuition if he's part of this Venturis company. They have some sort of, like, through the union, they have some sort of system which allows that. Um, homework is more important than fun. Dad. <laughs> okay. Well. Have a good year in space. How old is their son? <laughs> That's no attitude to have. Homework should always be just a thing that... Homework should only ever be... Uh, as a supplement. It should only ever be completion of work that was supposed to be done during school time. There should never be homework just for the sake of homework. Dedication ceremony? What's that? Is that like a graduation? Except it's like to say that you're dedicating yourself to someone or something? I don't know. I said there was a photo, but um... Ugh. This has flop. This has like, uh, physics. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't this, was it? Oh, that probably is what it was. <laughs> Let's see what's in here. Oh, these are all the sunglasses. <laughs> these also have physics. Oh my god. Yeah, so... It was from his son. As a... Oh? What's, the, what's this? What's this arrow? It looks as though it should be able to be pressed. Like, I should be able to push it in and it pops out with something. Hmm. Let's just watch this. Well, listen to it. <laughs> well, it sounds like he blew up and failed. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, well... The only thing I haven't discovered or I haven't found the, the solution to is this, whatever this is. Can I throw something at it? Not really. <laughs> yeah, there's not usually a puzzle in these rooms, so I'm gonna just move on. Usually those rooms are just the a little extra for backstory. I did find an orange in the other room. I wonder if I put the orange on here instead. Because <laughs> that rock I found wasn't exactly very smooth. 
Ah, oh, I can't put it on there. Damn. <laughs> I'm sure there's something to that, but I don't know what it is, and I'm not gonna stress about it. <laughs> oh no, editing Rory will will take a look at this and see what he thinks. But yeah, the data transfer is complete. So let's take this. And let's head back to the main part of the station. I'm hoping that these episodes are not too long. Because, uh, I do spend a long time uh, looking at these. Subcontractor Fer uh, Ferrier, proceed immediately to the engineering module. Once AI data is transferred from all modules, you must also secure and return the AI's physical processing medium. The latter requirement is of the highest priority. Um, yeah, so engineering is the next location, and we'll find out more about what was going on with all this. Find out more about the story. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm probably missing some secrets and things, but I'm not too concerned about that. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Now we're learning little interesting tidbits about each person in each area, but we're also learning about the overall plan. I'm kind of guessing that it's not worked out. As much as I want that to be a good ending, and I want it to be like... I... You know, they, they successfully created the rocket and saved themselves. I doubt it. So I think... Cryogenics is the one wing that's like broken. Oops. Um... I don't even see it as a ring on this thing here. Because there's, there's the, um, we started with personnel on the deepest part. <laughs> we started in the purple ring and personnel and we've now done the biomedical ring. There isn't a, th there isn't another join. Oh, it, it occupies the same space as like this part does, which is just in an intermediary. So their cryogenics must be done in zero gravity. It did mention um, something about some stations have them with gravity and some have them without gravity. This must be one with no gravity cryo zones. There will be a way into these pods. But in the next episode, we'll go into engineering. But until then, if you like what you saw, hit like. If you want to see more than me, more than me. If you want to see more from me, wait, I'm going to start again. For some reason, my outro, if you like what you saw, hit like. If you want to see more of me, no, what, what the hell's my outro? If you want to see more from me, then subscribe, right? If you want to see more from me, then subscribe. Yeah. If you like what you saw, hit like. If you want to see more of the, it doesn't sound right anymore. If you want to see more from me, then subscribe. <laughs> uh, I'm losing my mind. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, 